I'm Michael Rappaport, the director of Beats, Rhymes, and Life, the travels of a tribe called Quest, and you're watching the world of Lewis. My man, Fife Dog, like to too. You think some brothers don't. Michael and Fife Dog, thank you guys so much for joining us here in the world of Lewis. Man, I am excited about the new documentary. Let's just jump right in. All right. What is your love? Oh, I guess we kind of know that. Your love for the legends. A Tribe Called Quest, what what made you say, you know what, nobody has done a great documentary on this band that has really flourished uh, thousands and thousands of, right. of, uh, of rappers or groups, I should say, right. to this day. What, what made you want to do it, Michael? <clears throat> well, I mean, I'm a fan. I've been a fan of theirs. I mean, their, their music has been uh, sort of a, one, one, of the, one of the themes and the soundtracks to my youth, right. as, as it's been to a lot of people. Um, they give me a lot of pleasure, a lot of joy, and I mean, I really kind of look at a Tribe Called Quest the same way people that grew up in the, in the 60s and 70s look at the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. I mean, right. they mean that much to me, and they mean that much to the fans, and their influence uh, is, is everywhere in, in popular uh, music and, and hip-hop today still. Right, right. Fife, when, when Michael came to you with this idea, what, what was your first response? Um, was everybody else cool with it? Because I was the last one he approached about it. Okay. Or called about it. And um, being that they said yes, I had no choice. So. Right. Q-Tip and Ali said, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got to ask, what in the in the documentary, does it come up the, the time you guys took a hiatus, you guys kind of broke up? Can you can you talk on that, on what happened with A Tribe Called Quest? During the hiatus? You were right. Absolutely nothing. Right? <laughs> I mean, we, we, you know, we broke up in 98, so... um. By the time 2004 came around, that's when we did our first show together since the breakup. Right. It was um, this thing called Street Scene, a big celebration of music in the city of San Diego. And um, they had the whole new Petco Park where the Padres play. Right. And they had that whole parking lot just locked off, the whole area locked off. It's, it's like a huge block party. Right. And Luda was there, Wyclef was there, a bunch of rock groups was there. Right. Black Eyed Peas, Tribe, you know what I mean, Cypress. Right. It was it was it was a jam for real. Was well. leaders of the new schools, you know, do you guys still 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 talk together? I haven't spoken to leaders in a while. Really? Yeah, it's been a while. Okay. It's been a while. All right. But um Buster wasn't at that particular show though. Okay. Surprisingly enough, you know what I mean? But, right. um Everybody else you could think of in music was at that show. It was just a big jamboree, for real. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, how does it feel? I mean, in the movie, or in the documentary, excuse me, uh, you have people like Pharrell, and you have Common, and you have you have guys that are, you know, at the pinnacle, saying they they owe much respect to you guys. How does, That's got to make you feel good. Yeah, because those guys, you know, they took the torch or the baton, so to speak, and ran with it, and they did a very good job. I'm not disappointed. Um, I'm happy that they're keeping the torch lit. Right. You know what I mean? But then there's others out there who, I'm not going to say they're whack, but they really don't care at the end of the day, and you can tell that they don't care. Who's the, the real lyricist? The not, not even lyrically, but just in general. Okay. They don't take time to really honor their craft. Right. And at any aspect, any angle, it's just all, it just all goes awry. They're happy with maybe one hit, two hits, but they're not looking at the longevity of it. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking anybody for eating. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. But don't make it bad for others. Don't do it at the expense of others who really work hard and diligently at their craft. You know right. what I mean? Right. Michael, as doing this, uh, as growing up, you know, listening to a tribe called Quest like myself, and uh, when, when you were like, you know what, I'm ready to do this, who, who did you get pull into your corner saying, look, okay, I want to get the Beastie Boys on what they think of, of a tribe called Quest. I want to get common, like I said. Uh, who was with you know, backing you to get this done? You know, honestly, getting um, other artists to talk about a tribe called Quest was, was probably uh, one of the easiest things to do. Um, it was really trying to uh, edit them right. because people had so much to say about tribe um and they've meant so much and and you know like guys like the beastie boys who are, came before them or kind of contemporaries of them and guys like pharrell and common who came after them i mean they just had so much to say about tribe called quest and 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 their influence on them and how much they admire them and respect them and uh it was really 
sort of a challenge to just pick the the, the sound bites and the parts of the interviews that I, to use because it was that was uh it was endless. I mean, Quest Love from the Roots. Right. I started shooting him. It was sunny out, and when I finished, it was like nighttime. I was like, <laughs> I, I'm so glad you gave me this interview, but I gotta get the hell out of here, man. You right. Know? So, but it, it, so that was that was a lot of fun just hearing them sort of you know fan out on, on how much they love Tropical Quest. Right. Right. Well, you got rave reviews at uh, Sundance, yep. and and then how did it get to this level? Were were you know, it, it, it's just, I think it, it all has to do with the group. I mean, people are such fans of the group. And, and like I said, I mean, I really look at them and, and other people look at them like the Rolling Stones of hip hop or, or the Beatles or the Ramones. I mean, they mean that much um, if, if you grew up listening to the group. Um, and I think that, you know, all those groups, the Doors and Jimi Hendrix and Wilco right. and all these sort of other, you know, indie rock groups of today have all been documented and, and, and really... Um, I'm pleasantly surprised that the film is coming out by Sony Pictures, right. but 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 not shocked because I know it's all a tribute to, to the group and, and and their fan base and, and what they mean to music. And stands the testament of time. I mean, Benita Applebaum, come on now. Yeah, you I mean, put that in right now and you'll still jam to it. Benita Applebaum is the same thing as like Gloria by the Doors. You know, Ooh. like Glo it's a, it's the same kind of feeling. Right, you right. Know, it, it's true. I know Five's like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> but you know, or 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 like any kind of you know sort of you. Know, know teenage love song you know like whether it's eight six seven five three any kind of you know like when you're chasing a girl i mean benita applebaum is it's the same thing right right it's the same thing so i mean their music it sounds you know it sounds just as good as anything out now and um and and their spirit really is the thing that uh you know separated them just the spirit there's there was this intangible quality and in, in something they captured um that just went right to the heart. It was right. beyond just the music. It was like this spiritual kind of thing. So, right. Um, I'm really proud to be a part of it, and I'm proud of Beat Rhymes in Life. And I, and I mean, the film's coming out in theaters, and it's a, it's a, it's a really an honor. And it, but it's it's all on tribes' uh, shoulders. Right. Well, you, you say you know it's faith. Uh, well, uh, um, Five U and Q Tip actually got together what at the age of two two years old, right? And you guys started then. You're like, let's do this, and then they were two years old school. when they were rapping. <laughs> I would love to hear that. <laughs> and then you hit high school, and you got Ali in it, right? And then, and then it was just born like that. Then you guys just hit it and ran with it. Who, who did you guys look up to when you first started out out of high school? Like, because there wasn't that many. In high school, and um, that's where they met the Jungle Brothers. They went to the same high school. Mike G's uncle was DJ Red Alert. Okay. So it's all right. about being in the right place at the right time. Right. You know what I mean? But who would we look up to? Mm -hmm. Exactly that. The Jungle Brothers, Red Alert, um, Ultra Magnetic MCs, Boogie Down Productions mm. was my all-time favorite. Right. Daddy Kane, Bismarck, the whole Juice Crew. You know what I mean? So coming Very from New York, like yeah, so coming from New York, you had to be ready at all times to be challenged to a battle and things of that nature and it was that's why i preach honoring your craft right because nobody likes to be embarrassed nobody likes to lose right nobody remembers second place right and First nobody place forgets place. anything when it comes to hip-hop right you know what i'm saying if you got punched in your eye in 1984 right they're gonna remember that in 2014 right exactly who did it what side i it was right everything right that's hip-hop right well you know what was what your saying? first battle do you remember your first battle in New York? High school. Right. Definitely. Just throwing it down in the in the hallways? Lunchroom. Right. That used to be your thing though, right? Fife? Like you were yeah. like a battle MC, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just you just had to be ready at all times. And real recognized real. No written lyrics. Had to be off top. And real MCs know when you're freestyling versus when you practice and took time to write and things of that nature. Right. So coming off the top of the head was my thing at the time. You know what I mean? And I just used to throw the daggers. But, you know, I, I lost my share. Don't get me wrong. I right. lost my right, share. Right, right. I lost my share, but for the most part, I definitely didn't lose more than I won. Right, you know right, what I'm right. Saying? Well, do you still throw freestyle out like when you're driving around? Every and, once in a while. And you'll just throw out like, oh, I'm yeah. more, I'm more of a writer now. I'm not even going to lie. Okay, okay. Yeah. Who are you feeling today? What, what groups are you feeling today? I'm, I'm I'm still old school with it, but okay. you know Nas looking forward to his yeah. new album. He's still so good. Right? Looking forward to the next Mob Deep album. Um, I like Quali. I like Most mm -hmm. Def. I like Common. Like we said earlier, mm -hmm. Kanye gets busy. Pharrell gets busy. The Clips is one of my favorite groups, along with 
you know, the De La Souls and the Brand Nubians and, like I said, Ultra. You know what I mean? Those those were groups that weren't afraid to push the envelope, Outkast. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I listened to a little bit of everything, but for the most part, I listened to old school Chic, okay. OJs, B-52s even. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, because you're it local to the dirty south with Outkast, B fifty twos. Well, I've I've lived out here since ninety three. I mean, I live in the Bay Area now mostly. Right. But I've had a home here since ninety three, so it took a lot of getting used to their style of speak, their style of music, and things of that nature. Because coming from the city to Atlanta, and you know, I was happy to have my first crib and everything. Right. But I hated those bugs, and I wanted to go back to the city because of those bugs. But right? Tell tell I had what to happened used when you saw it. a deer outside your house. You tell me this story. Like, <laughs> you tell you, you, you know, the deer I, was standing. Up, there was a deer. Fife was going to going to his car on a, on a, on a, a, a nice Sunday morning, and 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 he walks outside, and there was a deer outside. And what happened, Fife? And you know, I'm I'm ready to. I was on my way to ESPN Zone because my best friend. We always go at it. She's a Heat fan. I'm a Knicks fan. So I was coming up to the ESPN zone out here in Buckhead right. to meet up with her. So I got my Knicks gear on. I'm ready to go have some fun, eat some food. <laughs> Boom, I go outside and there's a big Milwaukee buck <laughs> <laughs> standing in my yard. Man, I didn't go a damn place. <laughs> he just turned around and went back in his house. I, I didn't get to ESPN zone until like... Third quarter, mid third quarter. I can relate because I'm scared of anything yeah. that has like that's Mm-mm. that's not any anything beyond a dog and a cat. I'm I turn around to. <laughs> but he told me that story last night. I was like, I, it was funny. Oh, that's great. Well, Michael, man, we're we're. We've seen you in over 40 films. Yeah. Love your work, man. Love that you've done this with A Tribe Called Quest. Thank yeah. you so much, man, from the bottom of my heart, yeah. being a fan of yours and A Tribe Called Quest. Where did you grow up? I grew up in New York City, in Manhattan, and uh, you know, went to school in, in, in Brooklyn. And you know, I'm a New York City kid. Right, right. So it all, it's only fitting to be able to throw down with A Tribe Called Quest. And yeah. You, and I mean, A Tribe Called Quest is, you know, a quintessential New York group. Right. And, um, and uh, you know, and the film is, is very New York centric. But I right. mean, yeah, so I mean, there, there. I mean, it doesn't get more New York than try. Right. So, Fife, let me uh, let me ask you this: uh, You down with Wu Tang? Are you still talking to those guys? And I mean, absolutely. Right. Right. Abs- I mean, I can't even believe I left them out when I was talking about the groups just now. I mean, but you, right. You, you could, yeah. I mean, you run DMC. You don't even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Um. Right. Yeah, Wu Tang's definitely one of my Ooh. favorite groups. Like, for real. Right. Yep. There it is. Throw the W up. Yeah, well, I just, uh, it up I just got back from Bonnaroo last week, and we were talking about uh, Outkast and saw Big Boy up there just killing it on stage. Did he kill I, it? Just killed it on stage and still got like He still got it. And I yeah. love to see, you know, the Southern flavor still being able to to hit it and, and love the New York vibe of, of music. Yeah. Like, there's... there's even though we're on the East Coast, there's still a completely different. Yeah, it's like East West. It's completely different, but it's yeah. still an East Coast feel. Do you get that too? When when you were putting this together, were you like, you know, there's so many different feels on the East Coast. Who who do I who do I get to represent a, a tribe called Quest down on the East Coast? I mean, you know, I mean, Outcast. Obviously, they they created their own lane, but I always could see the the uh, the inspiration in Outcast. It was derivative of Tribe Called Quest. Right. You know, especially, I mean, I really always saw that with Big Boy and Andre, uh, you know, like just the way they looked. And one of them was kind of like more eccentric and one of them was kind of more like the everyman. Um, I mean, but I mean, there's so many, there's so many different kinds of artists and, 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 and you know, styles of artists. I mean, the list is endless. I mean, I'm really excited about Nas's new stuff. He's really kind of keeping that, you know, old school sort of lyrics you know, kind of battle rapper right. stuff alive. I mean, it, it's it's good. I'm looking forward to this guy, Jay Electronica, who, who I think is from New Orleans, but he kind of has okay. a New York swagger about him. But he also sounds like he's from some, you know, like you don't, he's you kind of really don't know where he's from, which I think is interesting because he has kind of all different styles of right. MC. I, so. I think you're really interesting, man. I mean, to to see you in in all your uh, all your movies that you're in, but the love that you have for hip hop, yeah. no one would ever know that. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. really didn't know that you yeah. had that much love and passion for. I mean, it was it was a part of my life as, since I was a you know a kid. You know, like first just listening to the records and then. You know, going to the clubs. I mean, it was really just the soundtrack of my life, and it was a really an organic thing. I was a kid, and I mean, if you grew up in New York City, you were either into like hip hop or 
I don't know. That's all I listened to. Right. A little bit um, of punk with the Beastie Boys. Yeah, but that out, yeah, right? yeah, that was like one sort of scene. But I, I, I mean, the only clubs that I the first club I went to was a club called Union Square in New York City. It was the wildest, big. I mean, it's something like over a thousand people. It was a hip hop club. But I was 15 years old. You just went to listen to the music. Right. And you know, it was really just an innocent, you know, time for me and for a lot of people. I mean, the music was really innocent and and the culture w- was innocent. And I just happened to be. Around it, you right. know, enjoying it, and, and it, you know, it absorbed now. you. Right? And it absorbed it. I mean, it's just really just kind of organic thing for me. Right. Oh, I love that, man. It's yeah. deep. Well, Fife, let's do this, man. Uh, give us what you want people to take away from this new documentary about a tribe called Quest. Um, I would definitely want them to enjoy it first and foremost, but you know, I want them to understand that this goes to show that although we're celebrities or what have you, we're all human. Right. At the end of the day, we make mistakes. I definitely made my share. I'm definitely not perfect, but at the end of the day, we just had a talent that God gave us, and we made do with what we had. Right. You know what I mean? So whatever it is you want to do, whatever it is you want to be, there's no such thing as can't. Okay. You know right. what I mean? So, right. You know, it's, it's definitely the travels of a drive call quest, I'll tell you that much. Right, right. Yeah. Well, we don't mind putting you up on a pedestal, my man. We really don't. You, Thank you. You and the band. Like, much love. Uh, what, what would you like, Michael, for people to take away from this? I mean, I would like it to be a, a celebration of a tribe called Qua- of, of a tribe called Quest. I would like it to be an exploration of uh, what they accomplished. Um, you know, kind of looking at them as, as you know, I always looked at them as like superheroes, like Q-Tip. Right, and, right. Ali Shaheed Muhammad and Fife Dog, you know, but then it also looks at them as, as regular guys and, and as humans. I mean, they're, they're like have a family unit, and I think the movie's very emotional, it's very funny, and it's a celebration of, of the golden era of hip hop. There it is. And if you have a pulse and you like any kind of music, you'll certainly love this film. Right, right. Woo, well put. That's how we do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, how are you going to say, you, you, is there, is there, there's got to be at least one, you know, Beatles song you like. There's got to be a less, at least one Tribe Called Quest song you like. Oh, That's how course. I feel. I can't even count them on my, all my fingers, man. I got to yeah. use some toes on that yeah. one. <laughs> I mean, you know, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're breathing, you're going to like some of the music. Right, right. Well put. Well, let's ask really quick before we get out of here. We just saw you in a new commercial with Rob Deerdack. Oh, What's right. going on with DC? I mean, you know, I, I know the guys from DC. Rob's a friend of mine, Steve Berra. And, you know, I really got into the skateboard culture for my kids. Right. I didn't know anything about skateboarding. My kids love skateboarding. And through, you know, chasing them around and, you know, right. bringing them where they wanted to go with skateboarding, I met Deerdick and I met Steve Barrett, I met all the DC people. And, you know, they've been really uh, generous to me and really, really supportive of my kids and skating and, you know, invite me to the X Games. And I've been to the oh, barracks. come on now. Yeah, and I've Going been to, to you know, the Fantasy Factory. And I just sit there and watch my kids, you know, skate. And, you know, they, they give me, you know, they're just good people. You right. Know? And, um... They, they're cool with me and I'm cool with them. So how did you get the? Did you get a call saying, "Hey, look, want you in a commercial with Deer Dad?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "All right, cool." I mean, I, I for me, I'm not the type of dude like you know, like if I'm cool with you, you ask me to do something, and it, I'm in the same place as you, I'll probably do it. Right. You know? Okay. And and, and um, I try to put that. You know, I think we all, all of us, whether it's you know, I think everybody needs to kind of support each other. And you know, business right. is business, but. It was just on the strength of friendship and just, you know, I'm cool with them and they're cool with me. So I'm like, all right, yeah, where is it? All right, you got something for me to eat? Cool, I'll be there. There it is. There it is. All right, well, you, we're, I, I think we're friends now. All right. You're in the world of Lewis, both of you guys. You, you said you would do anything for your friends. I wouldn't mind throwing down a beat and see if you could freestyle. Oh, I, I mean, I, I'm just saying. You could throw one down, but I cannot freestyle. So I don't want you, if you're going to beatbox, I don't want you to, like, get your lips chapped because you, we'll just be here all day. I've tried many, many, many times. I don't, I, I can't even do, even when in my, I'm like, I could just do one verse. It's right. never happened. I can't even write a verse. Right. I have right. too much respect for, for, for the art of it, and, and, and I have too much respect and dignity for myself. And somehow or another, I don't want to embarrass my kids. If I could do it, I would do it. I got gotcha. you. I, I got gotcha. you. name for it. Michael Rappaport. You would think I would be able right. to do something, but I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm just a rapper fan. I love it. I love it, man. And thank you for for looking out for my soup coolers, too. Yeah, Yeah, because I don't want them getting dried up. Well, guys, thank you so much, man. It is uh, Beats, uh, Rhymes, and Life. The travels of a Beach tribe called in life. The travels of a tribe called, called Quest. Quest. That's it right there. Or the tribe called Quest documentary. Okay, we'll call it that too, right, cool. guys. Seriously, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. 